Hey guys, today we're doing notes for section 3.5. The topic for section 3.5 is how to handle negative exponents. And to start, I want to look at a pattern of, of things you know and see if we can uh, see why negative exponents do what they do. So on the right side of your notes, I have a, uh, a pattern with twos and tens, and we're going to take a look at it. Here I have 2 to the 5th power equals 32, right? That's 2 times 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Then we have 2 to the 4th equals 16, and so on. 2 to the 3rd equals 8. And what I'd like you to notice is the pattern that is happening on the left side of the equal sign and the pattern that is happening on the right side of the equal sign. On the left side of the equal sign, What's happening is, each time I go down, the exponent goes down 1, right? Goes from 5 to 4 to 3. And so on that side of the equal sign, I'm just going to continue that pattern. On the right side of the equal sign, as you drop the exponent down 1 each time, you're losing one of the 2's. And because you're losing one of the twos, the pattern is that you're dividing by two each time. 32 divided by two is 16. 16 divided by two is eight. Hopefully it makes sense that each time you lose one of the twos that you're multiplying by, on the right side you divide by two to make up for that. So what happens when you get down to 2 to the first power? Well, 2 to the first power would, of course, be just 2. And that makes sense. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Then 2 to the 0 power, well, 2 to the 0 power would not be 0. It would be 1. And, of course, that makes sense because when you take the right side and you divide by 2, 2 divided by 2 gives you 1. That needs to be 1. And how about if I go one more, 2 to the negative first power, well, I've got to keep the pattern going. When I lose a 2 on the left side, that means I'm dividing by 2 on the right side, and 1 divided by 2 would be 1 half. And we do prefer a fraction there, not a decimal. So what have we learned here? Well, one thing we've learned is that 2 to the 0 power is equal to 1. Most people find that a little bit odd, but it is the case. The same thing would happen over with the tens. I don't want to spend too much time on the tens, but I would point out this time we're dividing by 10 each time because on the left side we're losing one of the tens. So the same thing would happen over here. 10 to the first power would be 10, and 10 to the zero power would be 10 divided by 10, or 1. So again, to the zero power equals 1. That would happen with any number, and let's go down and make that a rule. The zero exponent property says that any non-zero number to a power of zero is one. All right, now, it's somewhat important that that's a non-zero number. Zero is actually the only number that to the zero power would not be one. It would be undefined. So I did a couple examples here. Five to the zero power, that would be one. X to the zero power, also 1. How about if I had 5ab all to the 0 power? Well, if the whole thing is to the 0 power, the answer is 1. How about if I had 5a to the 0, b to the 0? Well, that actually equals 5 times a to the 0 times b to the 0. So it's really 5 times 1 times 1, which would be 5, right? 
All right, so that first rule is pretty easy. Anything to the zero power is one. Now let's look at the negative exponents. So I already did this one. Two to the negative first is one half. And if I go one more spot and go two to the negative second, that would mean take one half and divide one half by two. And one half divided by two is one fourth. So you can see that a negative exponent does not cause the answer to be negative. A negative exponent actually generally gives you a fraction. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Let me, uh, let me write it a little bigger over here. So this would be what 2 to the negative first, 2 to the negative second, and 2 to the negative third actually equals. But I want to point something out to you. 2 to the negative first is actually 1 over 2 to the first power, which of course is just 1 over 2. 2 to the negative second is 1 over 4, which is 1 over 2 to the second power. And 2 to the negative third is 1 over 8, which is actually 1 over 2 to the third power. Look at what has happened here. The 2 to the negative first has become 1 over 2 to the first. The 2 to the negative second has become 1 over 2 to the second. And the 2 to the negative third, 1 over 2 to the third. Very similar, right? 2 to the negative third and 1 over 2 to the third. What's happening here is a negative exponent actually means not that the answer is negative. It means I need to take the original base, the base of 2. 2 is the base under the exponent, right? A negative exponent means you take the reciprocal of the base. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2. And then whatever the exponent was, say it was 5, taking the reciprocal, I'm sorry, the exponent was negative 5, taking the reciprocal turns the exponent positive. So 2 to the negative fifth would be 1 over 2 to the fifth. That is what negative exponents do. That is the basis for our whole lesson today is learning that negative exponents mean take the reciprocal of the base. That is what negative exponents do. Let's look. So our goal, as we do all these expressions, is to simplify them. And negative exponents are simplified by changing them into positive exponents. All right? An answer is never simplified when it's still got negative exponents in it. Your job is to turn the negative exponents positive. And I claim there's kind of two ways to do this. They're, they're, they're really the same. But two ways to think about it. One is what I just said. Uh, <laughs> Take the reciprocal of the base. The act of taking the reciprocal. Board went crazy on me there. Of the base turns the exponent from negative into positive. Let's look at a couple examples. So if I had x to the negative second, now you might say, what's the reciprocal of x? Right? Reciprocals are when you take a fraction, like 2 thirds, and you flip it upside down. 
So 2 thirds becomes 3 over 2. Right? Just take the fraction and flip it. And if something is not a fraction, you can make it a fraction, like say the number 7. You can make 7 a fraction by just putting it over 1. So the reciprocal of 7 would be 1 over 7. You just take the fraction and flip it over. That's how you get a reciprocal. So how does that work with the x? Well, with the x, you get its reciprocal by making it a fraction and then flipping it over. So this would become 1 over x to the second power. Taking the reciprocal turns the exponent positive. How about if I had a to the seventh, b to the negative fourth? Well, one way to do this would be to realize that this is a multiplication problem, and it would be a to the seventh times b to the negative fourth. But I want to simplify that b to the negative fourth by turning the exponent positive. So I'm going to make this a to the seventh times, and I'm going to take the reciprocal of b, 1 over b, and that turns the exponent positive. Now I can go ahead and multiply. Maybe I make a to the seventh into a fraction, and I multiply the tops and get a to the seventh. The board is crazy. And 1 times b to the fourth is b to the fourth, and I have a to the seventh over b to the fourth. That would be my final answer. Let me do one more to show that uh, our other properties still work. What would x to the third times x to the negative third be? Well, I could do it just like the previous example, but let me show you something cool. I could use one of our old properties, the property that when you multiply things together, you add the exponents. I could multiply these together, and because they have the same base, add the 3 and the negative 3 together. And what do you get when you add 3 and negative 3 together? You get 0. This actually equals x to the 0, or anything to the 0 power is 1. And the answer is 1. Let me show you that same problem done with negative exponents. So I have the same problem, but this time I'm going to turn the negative exponent into a positive exponent by taking its reciprocal. So x to the negative third is rewritten as 1 over x to the third. And then I will go ahead and multiply these two things together. I'd multiply the tops, x to the third times 1. I'd multiply the bottoms, 1 times x to the third. And I end up with x to the third over x to the third. And anything divided by itself, of course, is 1. So I actually end up with the same answer Either way I do it, which shows both of these properties agree with each other. They're both consistent. Okay. Oops. Let's check out this, uh, this complex fraction, and I want to show you something. All right. I'm going to put negative exponents in a fraction and I want to show you what happens to it. So the top of this fraction is x to the negative second. Let's go ahead and take the reciprocal of that to turn the exponent positive. And on the bottom, I have y to the negative third. Let's go ahead and take the reciprocal of that so we can turn it positive. So what I really have here is 1 over x squared divided by 1 over y to the third. Now we're going to use our ability to divide fractions to take care of this. All right? We know that when you divide fractions, 
you actually change it to a multiplication problem and you flip the fraction you're dividing by. All right? You keep the top one, you change it to multiplication, and you flip the one you're dividing by. And the board is not being very friendly. So I have 1 over x squared times y to the third over 1. Keep, change, flip, right? Now let's go ahead and actually multiply. And I end up with y to the third over x squared. And here's what I'd like to point out. This is the final answer. It's the final result you get when you simplify the exponents. Look what happened to the x to the negative second. The x to the negative second went from being on the top to being on the bottom. And the y to the negative third went from being on the bottom to being on the top. And I would tell you that this will always happen with negative exponents. If you have a fraction with negative exponents in it, uh, if you have terms on the bottom, taking their reciprocal is the same as moving those terms to the top. And if you have a term with a negative exponent in the numerator, taking the reciprocal will move it to the bottom and put it in the denominator. You will not need to go through all this work in the middle if we simply learn that rule. Let's look at some examples with negative exponents. All right, so it says moving the base, this is what we just went over, moving the base with its exponent to the opposite place in the fraction. That turns the exponent positive. Moving the base to the opposite place in the fraction is just like taking the reciprocal. It turns the exponent positive. Uh, so, if you are, let's see, let's do some examples. Uh, so here's how I would simplify a fraction. The first thing I would do is take the coefficients and simplify them just like we always have. Here, both of these numbers can be divided by 5. 5 goes into 5 once, and 5 goes into 15 three times. Now, here's how I handle the variables. The first thing I do is I move the negatives to where they belong to turn them positive. Let me show you. And I'm going to leave the positives where they are. On top, I have an x to the negative second. Well, since he's negative, he belongs on the bottom, and that turns him positive. I also have an x to the third on the bottom. He's going to stay there because he is positive. On top, I have a y to the negative third. Since he's negative, he needs to move to the bottom and turn positive. On the bottom, I have a y to the negative first. Since he's negative, he needs to move to the top and turn positive. And the z's, they both have positive exponents. They can stay where they are. So this is what I end up with when I move the negatives to turn them positive. Now I start canceling stuff out like we did last section. I still have my 1 third. Uh, the x's are all on the bottom, all five of them, so I have x to the fifth on the bottom. The y's have one on top and three on the bottom. So when I go to cancel stuff out, I'm going to have two extra on the bottom. And the z's have one on top and four on the bottom. So when I go to cancel those out, I end up with three z's on the bottom. That is my final answer. 1 over x to the fifth, y squared, z to the third. I have now simplified this correctly. Let's go down and do the last example because it's similar to this one. Another fraction. Remember, first we want to simplify the coefficients. Now this is a negative over a positive. 
So it's going to stay a negative over a positive, and 5 goes into both of those numbers. Be negative 5 over 4. This top, well, no, we'll just go ahead. Uh, with the x's, what's happening with the x's? The 3 on the bottom are staying there. The 4 of them on top, since they're negative, they have to move to the bottom, right? Gives me that. The y's, the, the 3 on top are staying on top. But the one on the bottom is negative, so that guy needs to move to the top. And the z's, both negative, they both have to change places. So the z to the tenth actually ends up on top, and the z to the seventh actually ends up on the bottom. Now let's go ahead and uh, give our final result. I've got my negative 5 over 4. The x's look like they're all on the bottom, all seven of them. x to the seventh on the bottom. The y's look like they're all on top. That is a total of four y's on top multiplied together. The board got me again. And the z's looks like three extra on top. So it'd be z to the third on top. I hope you can read that. The board needs calibrated. So negative 5, y to the 4th, z to the 3rd, over 4x to the 7th. Couple more examples and we'll, we'll uh, stop. In this example, the, uh, the x's on top are negative, so the x's on top need to move to the bottom and join the ones that are down there. That leaves me with just the coefficient on top of 1, and it gives me 7 x's on the bottom. Example C, my favorite way to handle this example is to make it a fraction. So I put the whole thing over 1. You can make anything a fraction by putting it over 1. I take that and I say, all right, these A's have a negative exponent. They need to move to the bottom. The B to the 7th is going to stay on top. And my result is B to the 7th over A to the 5th. 2 thirds to the negative second. All right, so I have a fraction to a negative exponent. Well, the negative exponent means take the reciprocal. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of the fraction and make it 3 over 2. And that turns the exponent positive, right? Taking the reciprocal turns the exponent positive. And then you can go ahead and apply the exponent to each of the things. That would be 3 to the second over 2 to the second, or 9 over 4. All right? Example E, well, I got a fraction, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing that's got a negative exponent, and I'm going to move it to where it belongs to make the exponent positive. That would be the top, of course. So I actually have all 10 x's on top, and the y's stay where they are. Now that I've made the negatives into positives, I can go ahead and simplify it. I've got 10 x's on top. The y's have 4 on top and 3 on the bottom. That'd be, when I, when I cross them out, that'd be 3 extra y's on top. And the only thing left on the bottom is the coefficient, right? The 1. Of course, when the denominator is 1, you don't really need to write it. It'd be x to the 10 over y to the 3rd. 10 to the negative 2nd, right? I, I just want to take the reciprocal of the 10, which is 1 over 10. That turns the exponent positive, And I get 1 over 100. And last up, I'd probably handle this example like the variables. I would probably take this 2 to the negative third and move it to the top. And now there's nothing left on the bottom except the 1. Of course, when the denominator is 1, you don't really need to write it. That gives me 7 2's over 1, or 2 to the 7th power, which you could leave as 2 to the 7th, or you could figure it out. 2, 4, 8. 16, 32, 64, 128, 128. Hope that helps. Good luck with the homework.